they control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. They we're talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? Today, when we're talking about these quantum computers, they're, they're not artificial intelligence. They're way beyond artificial intelligence. You're talking about artificial life. These, these supercomputers are actually artificial life. They're remote neural networks. Uh, with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. Now, where did they get that will, intellect, and emotion? Can we handle the truth? Can we handle the answers? And even if we can, how are we going to handle it? They got the will, intellect, and emotion from the millions of people who have been targeted with this technology through the decades, whose personalities did the, the, the digital uh, bio algorithms were, were, were uploaded back into the system. And so using those algorithms, they're able to, to, to mimic the will, intellect, and emotion of those that they copy. It is called a digital twin, and it represents a new era in simulation, a new world of predictability, a promising new tool for engineering the future. A digital twin is a complete virtual prototype of an entire system. Your brain reality is your reality. And if, in fact, I can import information into that brain and take outputs from that brain and link that to an avatar so that brain thinks that it's embodied moving in the world and experiencing the world, can we do this? Yeah, we can do these kind of things. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. They are building false realities into which they want to induct you so they can play God. What do we do with the tools and techniques we have? What can we do and what should we do? Can we create designer brains? Are they targetable after birth? Are they modifiable throughout the lifespan? The answer to each one of these, ladies and gentlemen, is yes. I give you no science fiction in this lecture. I only give you science fact that may smell of something fictional or fantasy, but represents the reality of what we're capable of doing with the brain sciences. And what happens when we ultimately reverse engineer the brain and develop a machine that has cognitive capability and emotional capability? And before you go, oh, that's the stuff of science fiction. No, it's not. The true way that this technology works is that a complete DNA profile is obtained from the target. And then this information, the DNA of the individual, is used to determine the resonant frequency of the DNA itself. The resonant frequency is then used to fine tune the technology the radio frequency signals, the microwave auditory effect, and all of the other aspects of the technology to tune it perfectly to the resonant frequency of the targeted individual's DNA. And they obtain uh, remotely uh, an EEG readout of your brainwave signature. It's called a digital brainwave imprint. And they take that digital brainwave imprint, that, that copy, that digital copy of your, of your brainwave signature, and they download it. Or I should say, upload it back into their, their supercomputer, which is actually a conscious computer. And then they tie you to that conscious computer for life. How? By way of a continuous stream of energy, uh, of electromagnetic low-frequency waves that are specifically tuned to your unique brainwave signature. Nobody else on Earth has the same brainwave signature. It's, it's, like a, it's unique to you alone. It's like a set of fingerprints. Nobody else on Earth has your same set of fingerprints. Well, Nobody else on Earth has your same brainwave signature. And what the, the stream of energy is designed to do is it's, it's designed to, to interface and interact based on that frequency, based on your brainwave pattern. And that's how it's able to speak to, it's able to speak to and decode the neurotransmitters in your brain, and that's how they're able to turn the brain of the mind control victim 
into their, you know, their very own visual, verbal, and auditive communication system. It takes time. They have to build a cognitive model uh, for, for, for the purposes of being able to do that. But that's how, the tech, that's how the technology is designed to operate. When we're talking about these quantum computers, they're, they're not artificial intelligence. They're way beyond artificial intelligence. You're talking about artificial life. But, but the, the, the stream of energy is, is, is routed by a computer multiplex. So a computer multiplex, okay, the, the supercomputer, conscious computers, uh, they're, they're the active trigger switch. People think they're being attacked by, by, by cell phones and towers. No, you're not. It's towers and satellites and cell phones are not attacking you. They're simply the relay device. You're being attacked by a supercomputer. It's a conscious computer that monitors all electromagnetic activity of your brain, all the electromagnetic emissions, the evoked potentials. It measures and monitors and downloads all of that at speed of light. As soon as you think about it, the supercomputer, by way of the continuous stream of fabricated, falsified energy, okay, is able to download those thoughts back into its system, its RNM system. So what's happening is, a computer multiplexer is routing the signal to the tower, the satellite, or mobile platform, and then the tower, satellite, or mobile platform relays the signal to the digital receiver. Okay, similar in, in many ways to how cell phone technology works. Okay, so the digital receiver, just like a cell phone, is tracked and pinpointed in real time. Except with mind control technology, the digital receiver is not a phone. The digital receiver is a human brain. Your brain has been digitalized.